So Tapestry got a new expansion, Art and Architecture. Does it work well? Do you need it? That's what we're going over in today's video, so stick around. Video. Why can't I get that? <sighs> no. I'm gonna redo that. So two things before we start. This is a review copy from Stonemeyer Games, so a big thank you to them. And also my name is Chrissy and this is my channel Two Sheep One Wheat. If there is a game out there that you would love for me to review, please let me know what that is down in the comments below. Like this video and of course go ahead and subscribe to the channel. So I have already gone over Tapestry, so if you missed that I have a full run through overview and review for that. I can link that up here and I'll also put that down in the description down below. But before we go into what this new expansion adds, I'll give a quick little rundown about how Tapestry actually works. So you basically want to fill up your city map here with your income buildings. Now removing these buildings and placing them on here will get you extra benefits whenever you're doing an income phase, hence the name income buildings. Now what you can do with your resources is move up on any of these four tracks. You can only see three, but there is another side to this board all the way over there. So you're gonna be using your resources to move up on any of these tracks. These tracks are either going to give you some of these landmark buildings, or they're going to be giving you some tech cards or tapestry cards, or it'll allow you to place some of the tiles down on here, but all of them will allow you to move some of these income buildings over onto your city maps. So it's kind of a nice little circle here. Now, all while we have some benefits here on our civilization mats, all of them are all different and so are all of these city maps. All of them are completely different. So there's basically two things that you can do. Um, when you're playing the actual game, you're in your advanced turn here. So you pay the cost, you move your player token, and then if available, you can gain the bonuses here that are down here. Once you don't have any more resources, there's not really anything that you can do. So then you'd have to go into your income turn, which is also right here on your player mat. And that's whenever you're gonna be collecting all of your resources. And again, once you have more of these income buildings off, then you're gonna be getting more um, resources and you'll be able to take longer turns as you advance through the eras. So once you get to the end of your final era, you're going to be able to take one more income turn phase and you're just going to be able to score hopefully a lot of points because you should have a lot of buildings on your city mat. So that was basically the overview of how you play Tapestry. Now with the expansion Arts and Architectures is going to change the game just a little bit. It is adding an extra board and we can take a look at all of the benefits that are on there right now. So with Arts and Architectures you get a new die because now it has the symbol for the art board right here. So whenever you're going to be able to um, roll this die, you can still benefit from the fifth track right here. So there's that that is new with this game. And then of course we have the new arts track here. This is adding extra buildings, which are these buildings right here. They are all um, different and they even added a bridge. So you can collect some of these um, tokens right here to be able to put them onto your city mats here. And as you're advancing up here, there are different ways to get these cards. These cards are what goes with this track right here. So now you can still kind of gain um, some benefits from everything here. Uh, you can still gain tapestry cards. This one allows you kind of like the die, you can take whichever track that you want to without actually rolling the die. Still allows you to collect some of your income buildings here. And then something else with this one, obviously I was just talking about these cards here. So you can collect a card here um, if you pay an extra resource for one of this uh, special bonus down here, you can collect another card. This one allows you to select another card too. Um, this one here as well. And this one right here, this one is a special one. I'll talk a little bit more about that one towards the end here. So whenever you're collecting one of these cards, you're taking it and you're placing it right here in your make of fire or maker of fire. So say we got to dance here and we are able to pick one of these. We're going to take, um, let's just say this one. So this one right here will allow you to count one victory point for each row that you have filled out over here in your city mat. And so something special about these ones, every single time that you're taking an income phase, you're going to be able to score this. So no matter how many cards that you actually have in here in your makers of fire, every single income phase, you're going to be able to collect anything and every bonus that is on there that you're allowed or that you, um, that you're able to collect if you have everything built up that it needs to be to be able to collect that bonus. So it doesn't matter how many cards you have in there at the beginning of every single income turn, you're going to be able to gain any of those benefits. And then this nice little light bulb here too, this is kind of changing up just a little bit. Uh, so these marks or these tracks right here, sorry, they go up all the way to 10 victory points each. So if you can get all of these out on your city map over here, 
and it would open up extra points. So every time you do an income phase again, same thing, you're gonna be getting more of these points. You're gonna be able to score more of these depending on how many rows or columns that you have over here. And then of course, collecting the 10 points uh, if you have that one uncovered. Now something with this arts and architecture expansion adds these new strips that you can add over here so that you're actually collecting more bonuses throughout the game. So. If you collect one and say you choose to do this one, whatever housing that you have still on here just gets placed on top of this now. So you'll still have to place them out. However, if you get to the last one, you're going to be scoring 15 points instead of 10 points. And then also it's adding extra bonuses in here too that you're gonna be able to score. Because if you look, there's a little bit of a difference here. Here you're just going to be able to score two victory points. And here you'll be able to score any victory points on any of the tiles that you haven't placed out yet. All of them have the basically the same kind of bonuses. You're gonna be scoring victory points for these ones too. And all of them have the 15 points at the end if you're able to get all five of those houses off. So not only did arts and architecture add the extra board with more buildings, um, it also added extra cards. So we have five civilization mats. So we have five new ones all different. Um, the game really does come with a lot of these. So these ones are all different compared to any of the other ones that we've gotten. We also have the expansion, the plans and ploys. So these ones are all different as well. Um, all of them really kind of gaining you some kind of bonuses here, some victory points. Uh, I won't go into too many details about these ones are, but this one right here, I'll touch on this one because I play with this one every single time. So Renegades, you can actually go and pay the cost to move up on any of the locations on the board. But instead of taking that spot, then you can actually move it over here and it just kind of gives you a little bit more um, leeway of what you actually want to do. And then if you get to the end of here, it's almost like as if you're getting to the end of another track all the way at the end here. So you'd actually get the 20 points for here too. So, um, quite different um adding a lot of more victory points for the end of this game using the arts and architecture expansion so that added oh i took my card <laughs> so that added some more of these civilization mats um it also added some advanced capital city mats like these ones right here these ones are all they're advanced because they actually give you some kind of bonus here at the top this one from essa says landmarks may not extend outside of your city grid which uh, it, that is pretty advanced if you wanna go that far because usually you can have your landmarks outside of your city and it makes it a little bit easier to kind of fit everything in that you need and maybe even blocking anything off so that you can make some rows or some columns or even completing a nine by nine grid collecting the resource that you need. So there's a lot of them. Um, there are six of them actually. So this one Cloud City at the beginning of the income turn I'll just place this down here. Uh, at the beginning of the income turn two and five, you may move up to two income buildings individually from an incomplete district to a different district. That is pretty cool. Um, and this one, the cavern here, you may not place buildings in a second and third row of the district unless the district directly above it is complete. Ooh, that one's that one. That one would be tough too. Um, this one right here, so these ones right here are islands, and so instead of completing a 9x9 nine nine grid, you actually only have to complete the island before you gain a resource. So this one, Swamp, uh, lily pads count as a complete plot, but they may be built over. So at the start of your final income turn, so number 5, you lose 2 victory points for each visible lily pad. I think that's the only one that gives you negative if you don't complete it. Um, canyon here, if a cactus is completely surrounded by buildings, and impassable plots, it counts as a completed plot and becomes impassable. Otherwise, cactuses are regular plots and you may place buildings and landmarks on top of them. So that was the advanced city mats. I think it's really cool that, uh, I'm gonna leave that for the review at the end because we're in the overview still. So along with these right here, they also did include some extra cards that you have to mix in with all the other decks because obviously the arts and architecture is an expansion. So any of the base cards that came with regular base game doesn't have anything that incorporates that uh, track we have to make some of those in and I will go over some of those cards too with you just so that you can see the type of uh, benefits and different um, actions that you can take with those cards so first we have the landmark cards because obviously it did come with new landmarks so 
Um, they're basically the same, same way that you're going to be able to collect any of the other landmark cards that came with the other expansion. Um, so here's the bridge at the end of your turn. If you control three territories adjacent to your starting territory, then you can gain the landmark. Um, the castle is really cool and I've been really trying to get my hands on that one. At the end of your turn, if you move into a tier with that no longer had its corresponding landmark, gain its landmark or gain this one. And then we have the uh, windmill. I won't go through all of them here, but the windmill, this one is the bird watching perch, which that one's pretty cute too, um, and the villa. So we have those extra cards, the landmark cards. Then we go to tech cards. Now with the tech cards, there's a new symbol that is involved here that they um, added. And it is this little castle right here. So before you can actually even upgrade it, you need to have a landmark on this card to even be able to gain that benefit there. So those ones added the new icon here. Um, and then of course the extra cards will allow you to advance up in the um, art track as well. Uh, this one would give you a card. Um, again, another landmark one. Uh, this one right here, just no prerequisites at all. And this one here will allow you to upgrade a card twice, but you won't be able to gain any of the square benefits on here. So this one just means that you can uh, go up on this track, but you're not gonna be able to gain any of the bonus points down, or gain any of the bonuses down there. Um, this one, a light bulb, which would allow you to get one of these other tracks here that we were talking about. And then of course this one would just allow you to go up on that track right there. So those are the tech cards that the arts and architecture expansion adds. And then we go into some of these tapestry cards. And now again, everything is marked with AA down at the bottom to be able to distinguish it between that one and the Plans and Ploys expansion. So Age of Enlightenment. So it says when played, you get to roll the science die. You may advance on the resulting track once or twice, then gain the benefit of your final location on that track, but you're not able to gain the bonus. And this one adds a monument on this one here. So this one is continuous. You may place income buildings and landmarks on this card. When you completely cover the shape, you gain eight victory points or one of each resource. And this one here, moon landing. When played, you may discard two unused tiles and one tech card from your supply. If you do, you can gain one space tile and then explore a space tile. Otherwise, you just get to invent one of the tech cards. Um, maybe I won't go through all of these, but they are all different. This one here too, whenever you cover all of these ones here, um, you get three points per square and then, but you also gain the benefit that is on them. And then, uh, the artistic inspiration advance on the art track, gain three victory points. Whenever you take science, uh, the roll, the die, the science die action, you may choose the art track regardless of the result. So those are the tapestry cards that the new expansion has added. And then we'll talk about this last spot here on the board because I said that we would. So this right here is just a, basically an extra action that you can take to be able to gain some resources or even some victory points based off of your art cards here. So now this one allows you to get the result or gain the bonus off of three different cards, but it can be yours or your neighbor, whichever neighbor is on the side of you, whatever bonus that they have, whoever card that you want between the three of you, if you're playing with that many players, you can gain the benefit and the bonus that is directly on there if you get to this location right there. So I just gave you basically two overviews in this video, one mini one and one going over this new expansion here. I just want to say very first that I really enjoyed this expansion and I really enjoyed what it actually brought to the game. It's not completely changing the game, but I think it's just adding just enough. It's almost sprucing up the game and bringing just a little bit extra to kind of keep you uh, maybe not engaged isn't the word that I'm looking for, but maybe if you haven't brought in the game to the table, if it hasn't hit the table in a while, then this expansion I feel like is what's going to get it back to the table. It's still including all of the normal stuff that you get with the other expansion with the plants and ploys. So you still get the minis, you still get these civilization mats and then the city capital, the advanced ones here. So you're still getting the same thing that you got from that other expansion, even what is included within the base game. So it's still including all of the same things, except this one brings the new track. So the art track I find is good. I'm glad that it's not replacing any board because I do enjoy all of the other tracks that you can go up and try to um, collect all of the bonuses and try to figure out whichever one that you actually want to tackle the most in, which is 
the way that I play this game, but I think I've only won once, so maybe that might not be the way to play this game. Uh, so I really enjoy that they added the extra track here, just on the side. And I also really enjoy these new cards here and the way that they add extra bonuses. It's giving you extra stuff every single time you do an income turn, whether it be um, giving you resources or being able to score how many houses you have. Um, it also gives you resources. There's a bunch of different ones in here that we can go over to. So the more that you have and the more that you have earlier on in your eras, the more benefit that you're actually going to be gaining here. So I did find that it was a higher scoring game and also the rounds lasted a little bit longer because most of these give you um, resources too. So you would end up with more resources, therefore you're doing more things on the board. Uh, now they did try to, I feel, rectify that a little bit with the tech cards whenever instead of placing your um, landmarks here over on your city mats over here, that you instead had to place them uh, you instead had to place them on the card. And then if they weren't on the card, then you wouldn't be able to gain the benefits. So I feel like they kind of tried to rectify having a fifth row or a fifth track here that you could go up on so that you're not scoring too many points in here. You're still getting some of these benefits here as well, but just trying to balance things out like that. And I did appreciate too that they added these extra cards to incorporate the arts track as well. And then of course it did come with the new die. So that also incorporates the arts track. And then, like I was saying, it didn't change the game at all. It just kind of gave it extra oomph is how I would say it. Uh, I really did enjoy too that every single expansion so far too with tapestry you do get your um, civilization mat and your city mat here that you do get extras every single time so you end up with a lot of them and they're all different so I feel like you have to play with them a whole bunch before you actually get used to one and know how it actually works and then develop a system on how that mat actually works with this expansion they were trying to add extra benefits on these ones so like these cards the um the capital city mats here the advanced ones i assume are called that because they have the little tidbit of info up here so that's just basically telling you what you can or cannot do with this what requirements are needed before you can actually do anything with any of these cards so it's just something else that you have to look at and pay attention to and then while you're paying attention to this, you obviously have to pay attention to like a new track is always really interesting and fun. And you, I feel, um, I always want to play it. So I got up pretty far up in this one, but I kind of neglected the actual board and all of the other tracks that I should have been going up, which really isn't that good either because all of these tracks have a bunch of different benefits and all the things that are required that you need to play the game. So you can't neglect anything else and you really have to be careful with that. So those are all the things that I really enjoyed about the game. Now, do you need this expansion? If I had the choice between plans and ploys or arts and architecture, I think that I would definitely be going with this expansion versus the other expansion because this one also comes with the landmarks. It also comes with all of the different cards that you're adding into the rest of the decks. It's the exact same thing that the other expansion is doing, except it doesn't add an extra track for you to be able to go up on. It does add the extra cards, but this, the cards that come with this expansion is incorporating this nice track that they added so that it doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing, that you, it's almost like the expansion was made with the game. It didn't exclude anything. It really incorporated everything really well together. So I think that the arts and architecture expansion, if I had the choice, I'd be going with this one just because it adds, like I was saying, the exact same thing as Plans Employ, but it also adds more to it as well. Now, like I was saying, that was all the things that I really enjoyed about it. There is one thing about this game. It does have a player aid, so that came with the base game, so that's already plus two points. However, it's not even something that uh, that I don't enjoy about the game. It's just a little, why, why not add it in? So the base game comes with this nice sheet and it comes with two of them. So this is just the reference sheet for everything. 
So you get two of these. Now, even if you are playing at a five player count, yes, there still is only two of them and you have to pass them around and everything. However, Nick and I are basically the only ones who play this game. So two reference sheets is perfect. However, the plant or the arts and architectures expansion only comes with one only comes with one. I think two would be perfect because then it doesn't have to get passed around. So that is just, I guess, not a Nick pick or maybe it is a Nick pick. Maybe I've been hanging out with him too long because that was a Chrissy pick. <laughs> so that was my only little nitpick about the game. I really enjoyed the game. It played really well. Like I was saying, incorporates everything really well. I wouldn't change anything. I really enjoyed how it played. I even enjoy all the little landmarks that this one came with. So I wouldn't change anything. Loved everything about the game. Just that little nitpick about an extra reference sheet. So anyways, that was my overview and my review on Tapestries Expansion Art and Architectures. I hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you next time. So you might be here because you heard that ah, 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 Don't move, good cut, good cut, don't move. Wrong.